I found the very first pickup truck I ever purchased on my own dime. And since I sold it, it's changed hands a few times. But late one night, I was on Facebook Marketplace and happened to stumble across the same exact truck. But let me tell you, it's in pretty rough condition. The paint's destroyed, the brakes failed, the interior is absolutely trashed. So in today's video, we're gonna be fixing all of that. First drive, it's been three years since I've been hands on with this wheel. And it's, it's like reminiscing old memories. It's pretty cool, the squeaks are coming back. There's a lot of stuff we still need to do to it. You know, it needs a lot of cleanup work, but I think this is gonna be a really fun project to try and get it back to stock. So after my buddy, hey guys, Chris Vix here, and I test drove the truck, we handed over the cash and took the truck home. So I present to you my former 1996 Dodge Ram 2500 12 valve, baby. mentioned earlier throughout this video we're going to be showing you how we restore the wheels back to their original condition fix the leaking brakes also repair the air conditioning super detailed the interior and brought the exterior looking absolutely incredible i just couldn't believe this right when i got into the pickup truck i remember that the original owner's manual was still in there but i didn't realize that not only was the original owner's manual in there but also the very first service ticket that this truck ever had. It was an oil change just about 5,000 miles old in 1996. And you can actually see the customer's name is C. Freeman. And there's two slips in here, as a matter of fact. And the guy's name is Charlie Freeman. I Googled him, and unfortunately, he passed away a couple years ago. In his obituary are the names of his children and grandchildren. I tried to reach out over Facebook, but I couldn't really get through to messages. I don't know. Anyways, if any of you know him, his name is Charlie Freeman, and he's from Roanoke, Alabama. No longer with us, but if you know any of his family members, hey, show him this video. I think it'd be super cool. Also, in the owner's manual, there was a other service ticket for, I think it was like a hitch installation, maybe something along those lines. But pretty cool to have these original records with the vehicle. Guys, I've been going through the truck, and I cannot believe this. I left a Lucky Charm in here that was in the truck when I bought it, and I left it when I sold it because I thought it was just a Lucky Unique piece, and here it is. It's still in the truck. It is the Lucky Horseshoe. I am so surprised because this truck has changed hands multiple times, been sitting for years. The Horseshoe's still in here. You can actually see an indentation in the carpet where it's been sitting for years and years. I don't know. I just think this is a really cool piece. Well, guys, here she is. This is a 1996 Dodge Ram 2500 with the 5.9 liter 12 valve Cummins engine. This truck is super unique because it is just a second gen Ram that is built to drive a million miles. But let me tell you, this thing is in way worse condition than when I first bought it. Take a look at the picture from when I first owned it. You can see how clean the truck actually was. And I happened to stumble across this thing after it changed owners a couple times. So let's get to it. We're gonna do a walk around. Starting at the driver front corner, every single wheel is like this. It has this deep dirt etched into the chrome. Now this is plastic, but my plan is to completely restore them. You can even see I started to buff a little bit off. So we're gonna get these wheels looking brand new. There's also road paint on every single corner of the rockers. So we gotta figure out a way to do that. My buddy Chris told me to hit it with the clay bar, some acetone, and that should take it right off. These badges are getting replaced. I thought about trying to restore them on my own, but I think they're just past the point of being restored. So we're going to replace these with brand new badges. The paint is in pretty rough condition. I mean, I know for a fact that before I bought it, that the previous owner had the truck painted, but as you can see, the clear coat is completely gone. So I've already been talking to one of my buddies who's really good with paint, so we can try and salvage what we have. If we can't, then we may have to explore other options. I'd hate to have to paint this thing because I want to try and keep this a budget-friendly build of cleaning this truck up. Moving around, it has the extended tow mirrors. If you guys know anything about Dodge Ram, having the ability to do that gives you so much more view when towing a trailer, so that's nice to have. And plus, I think they look really cool. As you saw previously when we were driving this truck home, we had a catastrophic brake failure, which is not a good thing, especially when I'm going to be driving this thing with my future unborn child and we have brake fluid all the way around in the wheel well. So there's something going on inside of the drum back here. So we're gonna need to take all this apart and we're gonna fix that in today's video as well. 
This entire video is gonna be really cool because I'm gonna show you everything that I do to this truck start to finish so that you can see the before and after. Uh, moving around the back of the truck, all the plastic pieces are faded, but we have a plan to restore these as well to bring some new life into these older parts. The exhaust tip, this does have a aftermarket exhaust from turbo back. I believe it's about four inches, which is plenty. It gives it a lot of room to breathe and it also sounds great in my opinion. When you look down the side of this truck, you can see that there's some dents and it's not perfect, but I also think those little things kind of add some character. So we'll probably just leave those things alone as well. Moving around to the front of the truck, again, same story as the back. We've got this faded plastic that we're gonna restore. Has a factory replacement grill and it is missing the Dodge emblem. So we're gonna need to get one of those. First glance inside the truck, the rear seat is sitting in the passenger seat. And you might ask yourself, well, why is that? Well, the reason for that is because there's an aftermarket stereo installed in the truck. And I gotta say, I'm not impressed with it, so it's coming out. Now, these second gen Rams are very well known for the dashes absolutely disintegrated. They don't take well to UV light and neither does the steering wheel. The steering wheel is peeled back, it's, it's ripping, it's in rough shape, it does not feel good. Uh, but, so we're gonna order a new steering wheel and then also some dash pieces. The dash pieces kind of are loose and broken, so we're gonna be replacing that. We're gonna get all of this carpet cleaned up. I also find a lot of pride in doing something like this on my own. It's a lot of fun for me and it's very satisfying work. So if you ever have an opportunity to buy a car that needs some loving, I highly recommend it because it is a lot of fun and you also learn a lot along the way. Now it's time to super deep clean this interior. As you can tell, it really needs it bad. So I hit up my boys, Detailers of Sarasota, Adam's just one of those guys that always invests every dollar he makes back into his business, just like me. So that's why I really respect him. Well, I think this has got to go. Got to go. We're going to take this off. We're going to take this off. I believe this is somebody's ashes. So we're going to get this back to the previous owner, along with the license plate. And Adam and I started out by using an air hose to agitate all the sand and everything that's out of the carpet and the air vents. And it really just breaks up a lot of the debris so they can be easily vacuumed up right after. See the color coming back already? Oh, dude, yeah. Adam's pretty proud of his new Mighty HP90 heated carpet extractor. And look at this thing work. It's impressive, man. We emptied out four buckets full of this milkshake water from this truck. I mean, the interior was just absolutely disgusting. But once we got the carpets cleaned up and the seats moved on to some hard panels like the door panels and the dash and the controls for the climate control, everything just came out so much cleaner. Even the vents, after we blew some air in there with all-purpose cleaner. If you wanna check out any of these products that we use, check out my Amazon storefront. I have everything listed that Adam uses and that we used on this truck. Adam and I decided to put tape down the middle of the center console, really just because we wanted that satisfying effect of pulling the tape off after half of it was cleaned. But in all seriousness, we used an all-purpose cleaner and one of these really cool Scrub Ninja pads I'd never used before, but definitely ordered some on Amazon after this, and went to town. Sprayed it down, scrubbed it one way, scrubbed it the other way, and then went back in circles. And I repeated this process about two to three times before I got the result I wanted. And once I pulled the tape off, I mean, you can see for yourself, it made a huge difference. Let's start off by taking the wheels from this to this, and also fixing the leaking brakes. As you know, we always started off by cracking open a cold Dr. Pepper. You're gonna be replacing the wheel cylinder on the rear driver's side, which catastrophically failed on the way home and was causing the brakes to smoke and pretty much only leaving me having front brakes. So this is gonna be number one on the list. So I used a flathead screwdriver to remove the wheel hub cover. Simple impact in a 516 socket. We are able to get the wheel off, no problem. Upon inspection, we're not leaking any brake fluid from the brake line or the parking brake area. You can see it dripping from here. So we're gonna need to remove the drum. I used a flathead screwdriver to kind of wiggle it loose and then pull it straight off. Now that that's off, you can see the wheel cylinder is leaking right here. The piston has completely come out of the wheel cylinder. And when I push on the brake, you can see more fluid draining from the cylinder.
You really need a couple simple tools in order to do this job, including sockets and wrenches. I really like these Chris Fix ratchets because you can extend them when you need that extra leverage, or you can shrink it back down in those tough to reach areas. So really to do this, it's quite simple. You, all you have to do is remove the brake line with a wrench, and that gives you access to remove the actual wheel cylinder that has full brake fluid that's been leaking on this particular truck by just removing these two bolts. It's super easy. Anybody who's just a beginner mechanic or you have advanced skills could probably do this in your driveway with no problem. Once I took those bolts out, the wheel cylinder easily popped out. You don't have to remove any of the springs that hold the drum or the brake pads together. It literally just slides out. Now it's important to keep the little hammers that are on the outside of the pistons. All right, so here's our failed part. This is a rear wheel cylinder for a 1996 Dodge Ram 2500 12 valve wheel cylinder. And what happened is this piston that seats here into this came out and lodge itself upwards. So this allowed all the fluid in the cylinder then to drain out. I was able to pick up a cylinder that they had in stock at a local parts store. So all we need to do is install this one with those two bolts, attach a brake line, drain some brake fluid, and we're good to go. It's important when installing the wheel cylinder to put these two bolts in and make sure they're very tight. I would recommend even putting them in going for a drive, coming back, and then retightening them again. Because if these come loose, you're going to have a catastrophic failure of your rear brakes, which would obviously very be very bad. So once I put the wheel cylinder bolts in, I tightened down the brake line, and then it was pretty much time to flush the brakes, make sure that we didn't have any air in the brake lines. And usually this takes a second person. You, you can buy a kit at a local hardware store that can allow you to do this on your own if you're advanced and know what you're doing. I highly recommend grabbing a friend or a family member to help you do this. But as you can see, I'm really low on brake fluid. So I topped it off. And when doing this process, you want to make sure that the cap is off of the reservoir for the master cylinder. And that way you can keep an eye on it to make sure that you do not run out of brake fluid. Pump it a couple times. And then go in. Okay, release. Pump it a couple times. And then in. Are you all the way to the floor? Yep. Perfect. Nice steady stream out of there. Okay, release. So what I'm having Caroline do here is actually build pressure in the brake system. So she's pumping the brake several times and then pushing the brake pedal into the floor, which builds a lot of pressure inside the brake system. And then I open the tiny valve, which allows fluid to come out of it. You're basically looking for a solid stream of fluid to come out. If it's spitting or there's any air in it, then you have to continually repeat this process until there's only fluid streaming out of the release valve. So you go through this back and forth several times and you can see right here that we're getting air mixed with the fluid. So we'll continue to repeat this process over and over until we only get fluid exiting the valve. While the wheel and brake drum were off the truck, I thought it'd be a good touch to paint this rusty old brake drum black again. Now you can pick any color you really want, but there's only three simple things you need to do this. One, a wire brush, two, alcohol, and three, a high temperature spray paint. Now it's really important that you use a high temperature paint because if you don't, it's simply going to burn off after a few short drives. So the first step is to use a wire brush. You can either do it by hand like I did here, or you can use a wire brush attached to the end of a drill. Once you remove all the debris, you then wipe the brake drum down with some alcohol and have a clean surface that you can spray paint to. Now I use a black high temperature spray paint and I did two coats. In a perfect world, you would tape off the inside of the brake drum where it makes contact with the brake pads. I didn't hear since I wasn't going to be painting the inside of it, really just the exterior. So after two coats of letting them dry for 15 minutes between each coat, it was able to install it back on. And as you can see, it really makes quite a big difference. Thank you. 
I thought it'd be a good idea and I've always really wanted to do this while the wheels were off my truck. I really wanted to clean the inside of my wheels because there's nothing more frustrating than when I'm detailing my own vehicle and I can clean the outside of the rim that's exposed really easily, but you can see all the brake dust, grime and dirt that's sitting on the inside of the wheel that's pretty much impossible to reach. So I used a product called Bleach White that's readily available at all automotive stores and even Walmart. And I'll even put a link in the description where you can buy these products. I also used a Scotch-Brite pad and a toilet bowl scrubber and I just sprayed this bleach white on there and let it soak. And with a little bit of elbow grease and that wire brush again, I was able to clean the inside of the rim so well. And so now when I go back to wash my truck, I don't have to worry about all that nasty looking crap inside of the wheel. I just think that this is a really cool touch to do to your vehicle and uh, it makes a big difference, you know? If you care for your vehicle like I do, then I would highly recommend when you take your wheels off your vehicle to either rotate them, change your brakes, just clean the inside of them. It's a nice touch and look at how great this thing looks when I put it back on the truck. If you go to amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Dr. Parker, you can see everything I use to restore this truck. Even the camera gear I used, even some dental essentials. Go check it out. I'll link it right here. One of the first things that Chris and I noticed when we met the guy to buy the truck was that it was overheating and super low on radiator fluid. We were worried it might have been a head gasket, but I remember that it had a specific issue when I previously owned it. And that was, it was a water pump was leaking or is either the thermostat housing. And after looking closely, you can see that the thermostat housing is actually leaking coolant. And this could be a problem because this truck is probably just filled up with water and it could be very corrosive to the block since it is an iron block. So I wanted to address this so that one, I wasn't losing radiator fluid over time and it wasn't leaking, but also two, to prevent any further corrosion happening to the block. Oh yeah. We're gonna get this cleaned up and try and use this same one. That way we don't have to buy a new one. So after getting it cleaned up and pulling the thermostat out, cleaning it with a wire brush and some alcohol, and then even removing the seals, cleaning those off, putting a little bit of oil or lubricant on them, putting it back in, I was able to completely seal off this thermostat housing so that it no longer leaked. Now, ideally, yes, I would have replaced the seals and I probably shouldn't have used a wire brush on the seal or the thermostat itself, but hey guys, this worked and it saved me some money from having to buy a new thermostat housing or seals and this is something that you could do at home in your garage like I did. One thing that drove me absolutely nuts about driving this truck is that the leather was torn on the steering wheel. And yeah, I could have probably bought it to an upholstery place and they could have refurbished it. But for the same price, I just bought a nice used one off of eBay. I was at my house in a couple days and, you know, I have all the tools to do this at home and you probably do too. You really just need some sockets and a screwdriver, a body clip tool, and you can rent a steering wheel puller from your local auto parts store. In order to remove the airbag and the cruise control, there's four nuts that were holding on the airbag and two that were holding on the cruise control. And all six of these must be removed in order to access the nut that holds on the steering wheel to the steering wheel column. Once the airbag's removed, all I did was use a body clip tool to remove the plug on the back of the airbag. Obviously I have the key off when you do this and then removing the plug for the cruise control and the horn. This is a really important step is you want to mark your midline through the nut and the bolt for the steering wheel column vertically so that you can align the new steering wheel and it's not crooked after you put it on. Obviously you can get this dialed in with a simple alignment, but this is a quick, easy way to do it so that your steering wheel is straight after putting your new one on. The steering wheel puller is really neat. It comes with a bunch of different bolts depending on your year, make, and model of your vehicle. It's kind of a universal kit and you put it together and you just crank it over with a socket. You can actually pop your steering wheel off just like this. Very rarely are you able to pull off a steering wheel at home without this tool. So I highly recommend getting it before starting this project because it can cause a lot of frustration. You don't want to damage your steering wheel column with like a screwdriver and a hammer. So make sure you have the right tools when you go to do this. It's as simple as feeding the wires back through the steering wheel, putting that nut back on, hitting it with an impact. Now it's good to go. Just plug back in your airbag, your cruise control, your horn, and you've got yourself a brand new steering wheel. 
If your climate control in your vehicle looks something like this, but you feel like it should look like this, there's probably an issue with the blower fan, which can be found underneath the passenger side dash on this Ram 2500. In order to access a plug that the fan was plugged into, I had to remove the glove box. Once that was removed, I was able to unplug the fan itself and then remove the three bolts that hold the fan in place. It was a little bit difficult to get to, but I was able to use some adapters and sockets in order to remove it. And as you can see, it is full of debris and no wonder why it wasn't moving much air. As you can see, there's quite a difference between the old fan and the new fan. This one has a lot of debris and dirt in it and also the, the, and also the seal is broken down around the edge. And the reason why you'd want to change this if this seal is bad is because it would allow air to escape as it's blowing air. And so then your fan is not going to work as well. So we've got a new fan. I picked this up at a local hardware store that they had in stock. It's just a couple of three easy bolts, plug it in, and then we should have air conditioning again. Once I got the new blower fan put back in, it was as simple as plugging it in and she was ripping. After we got the interior cleaned up, Mitchell from The Life of Mitchie came by to retint the windows. Cause as you can see, this tint was in terrible shape. He uses a product by Expel called Prime XR Plus, which is a nano ceramic window tint. And I'll tell you what, I've never gone the ceramic route, but I was blown away on day one. Dramatically decreases the temperatures inside the truck. What I really like about Mitchell's product is he pre-cuts the tint for your vehicle before you even show up. He asks for the year, make, and model, and he has a computer program that will then route out the tint. And that way, all he has to do is peel off the edges. Once he gets the windows cleaned, stick them on, and he's good to go. If you want to see more of what Mitchell's up to, go check out his YouTube channel, The Life of Mitchie. He's always running around tinting some pretty cool cars. So after we did the final touches of replacing this busted door handle and also this broken trim piece underneath the dash, it was finally ready to detail the outside of this truck. And this thing came together better than I could ever believe. I hit up Adam to come back and help me out with the exterior detail. I just love the way that these foam sprayers work. It's so satisfying to watch all the dirt and everything come off the truck. So after a good power washing of the bed and underneath the hood, you can see how much debris really came off. Another great touch is he uses an air hose to get around all the cracks and crevices, emblems and everything. It pushes all that dirt out from just where it shouldn't be and it helps keep the truck a lot cleaner for longer. And I think this is just goes the extra mile. He also uses a paint gun to spray on tire dressing, which is a cool touch. So we spray down the wheel wells and the tires. Use some metal polish to polish up the chrome and get this thing shining again. Check out this stuff. This is a black trim restore and it does an incredible job. I mean, I've had this stuff on the black trim for at least a week now and it's still shining. Well guys, here she is, all done. My 1996 Dodge Ram 2512 valve back in my hands in its original glory. If there's anything you wanna see me do with this truck, let me know in the comments below. I'm also curious as to what your favorite part of this video was. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoy this episode because this one just really hits me in the feels.